Hi again, everybody. This is the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. I'm Jamie Allison, and this is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different genres, different niches, just people doing really cool things in their space and things that we can take a little bit away from their journey and what they've done and hopefully apply them to our own lives. So we've talked to CEOs. We talked to lots of athletes. We talked to um, entrepreneurs, just people doing really cool things. And and, uh, I know I have one of those today. Just before we jump into the interview, um, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that we um, we have a relationship with Epitome Sportswear, and you'll also know that um, part of the thing that really appeals to us with our partnership with them is they they believe in giving back to the community that they serve, and, and we talk a lot about whole life success. They do a lot of that with kind of what they provide in their products and all of those things, um, but they also um, spend a lot of time giving back a, a portion of their proceeds to um, help create opportunities and develop more opportunities for girls and women in sports. So uh, a really cool thing from that perspective. So definitely take a look on our um, Instagram bio um, and you can kind of click through there. And I know there's a, a percentage off code. And uh, again, it's just a, a really nice way to, to be able to give back to uh, the community that way as well. So um, uh, so yeah, uh, and I think our, our guest today actually really fits in nicely with that. So um, Bella Martin has quickly become a big name in uh, in kind of sports management, uh, you know, generally uh, and sports um, media, um, but specifically in the CrossFit community uh, as well. Um, she is a competition event MC. Um, she's worked some really big events already, um, for things like Wadapalooza and Torian Pro and all those things. Um, she herself, I, I believe, is a CrossFit coach. She's a Lululemon ambassador. Um, she also has business experience in um, branding and marketing and has a real strong um, social media influencer presence. Um, and she's also uh, has her master's, uh, I believe, from Texas A&M. So um, some really cool things there. Um, but first of all, Bella, thanks very much for taking the time to, to chat with us today. Oh, my gosh. It's my pleasure. This is this going to be really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we talked just before we came on. I, I think that um, you uh, um, have a, a background that's really interesting, I think, to a lot of people who will be be listening. But um, maybe we'll, we'll start because obviously CrossFit has given you this kind of big opportunity the last little while. And maybe just what is it that brought you into that um, kind of CrossFit community and, and um, that part, part of you know the career, or the early part of your career that you're already still in, I guess? So this is always really funny because I was, I would say I was the biggest CrossFit naysayer for a while Mm -hmm. because growing up, my mom is a fitness professional. She wasn't into CrossFit. It was kind of a, you're not going to do that. So I listened to my mom, you know, I was a good kid. I listened to my mom. (laughs) And then I got into, when I was in grad school, a lot of my friends started doing CrossFit. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. that's kind of cool, but it's not for me. That's not going to be for me. Yeah. And then I had a friend and he was like, you should probably try it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. Convinced me to try it. I did it for a week. And that was a couple of years ago. And yeah. so for me to, you know, go from this person saying, oh, that's not my community. That's not my sport that I'm training to now. This is where I'm building my brand. This yeah. is what I do for my own fitness. This is something that I'm excited about sharing. I've got my mom into it when she comes to visit me. So it's been really cool to see how I've only, I've shifted my own mindset. And now mm. this is where I'm building my career and my brand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well why don't we, <laughs> why don't we, bump back a little bit then um, because obviously you've um, sports has always been an, uh, an important part of your life obviously if, if your mom's been kind of involved in that and you also went to school um, you have sports management and things like that well so tell us a little bit about you know what what was the appeal there have you always been an athlete and um, you know as you went through kind of schooling and and as you've gone through those things is has that always been an end goal to do kind of something similar to what you're doing now? So I would say it's the exact opposite of what I ever thought I would be doing, which is even, you know, it's even more fun that way. For me, going through school, I always thought I was going to do athlete branding or Mm -hmm. management to some degree. And so going in school for undergrad, that's just kind of where you're building. How do I build my own brand? What does that look like? How does it get into a management position? Who do I need to talk to and how? Mm -hmm. And then when I was in grad school, I was in a position to do actual research. So I was studying athlete branding practices. How can I help athletes? put themselves out there on social media and get in front of the right people, the right brand so that they can actually make money and build a brand there. So all of my research was on doing that for other people. Yeah. And then it came to be that I, I'd gone off social media for a little while. And when COVID hit, I was thinking, okay, you know, what can I do now that will help me once this is over? Cause I think there was a couple different types of people, you know, there were some of us who 
we took this time and we hit the ground running, trying to figure out where we were going to go when this was all over. And then there were some people that they needed time to decompress. And that was a good time for them. So for me, being in grad school and finishing up during COVID, I was like, okay, I'm going to use everything that I have ever learned from school, which nobody ever does. You never learn anything from school that you actually use in life. And I said, no, I'm going to use this. And so I went back on social media. And so I decided I'm going to use everything that I've learned and I'm going to put it on my own Instagram my own Facebook, my Twitter, everything. And it worked. And so it was so cool. And I was thinking, you know, wow, this is really cool. Everything we learn works. And then from there, I I kind of initially started on Twitter and I found that I was talking to the right people. Um, I think the first person that followed me that I was like, oh my goodness, this is huge was Des Bryant followed me like two years ago. I don't know if he still does. It's okay if he doesn't. <laughs> but at the time he followed me and I was thinking, wow, I'm doing something right if he's seeing my tweets. Because he's someone who I've respected as an athlete in the business space of sport. And so, you know, that was cool. I was doing the right thing. And then from there on Instagram specifically, I have grown since I started in 2020. Now I have about 28,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And so to see that organic growth, you're doing something right. Yeah. And what I found with CrossFit specifically, people are always trying to you know, learn about the new brands. What is the workout going to be? Things like that. And while I'm not an athlete, I've used my platform to show, hey, I'm not an athlete, but I'm doing CrossFit and I love it. I don't yeah. have aspirations to compete, but here I am. I'm in the sport and you can relate to me in a way because while I'm not the competitor, I'm doing what you're doing and we can talk about it and have a really good relationship. Yeah. Um, well, and how how the jump into doing MCing and that kind of thing. I mean, <laughs> obviously you, you enjoy doing this type of thing and, and yeah. you know, it may not be the the prototypical path into kind of, um, you know, sports media, but um, how has, how has that worked for you? How did that? So someone thought I'd be good at it and I didn't believe it, which is, I guess, you know, my entire coming into CrossFit has been this, oh, that's not going to be for me. And it is apparently for me. So um, someone who had been an MC in the CrossFit space for a few years said, Hey, I think you'd be good at this. There's an event at High Rocks that I think you should come try. You know, there's no pressure. Just come enjoy it. See how it goes. It was so much freaking fun. I met so many amazing people. And I think going into it without any of that pressure, where I was really just going to go have some fun and learn something new and try put myself out there, that was how I found my love for it. And from there, I was thinking, okay, well, what's the next step? Do I continue doing high rocks? Do I, you know, try to break into local events? What do I do? And so I was working with an event locally here and I had met a photographer and I said, hey, I want to go to this event called Wadapalooza. Who do I need to talk to? I don't even know the steps to get there. And he goes, don't say less. I got you. Yeah. And so from building that friend, he connected me with the right people. And then now I'm in this space where I get to connect people with the right people. And I'm becoming one of those people that you want to talk to if you want to learn how to be an MC or if you want to, you know, how do I do this? You can come talk to me. And so it's been really fun to be the person that knows nothing and knows nobody to now I'm the person that. I get to know people and then I'm the someone to know. Yeah. And, and you've talked about things that, um, you know, obviously because of your schooling come pretty naturally to you to be able to do brand development and some of those things, not, not always the, the easiest thing for some people. Um, you know, when, when you're approaching something like that, is there, it, it, and it doesn't matter if you're an athlete, you could be an entrepreneur who's trying to do the same thing. Um, were there a couple of things that you found while wow, this really worked for me? This was how I, like, how do you build your community? Whereas, you know, it, it, in your space, that's, it, it might be a little bit different, but even how you do that and the practices are probably very similar depending on, you know, you could be an entrepreneur in a completely different space, but have to do similar community building. How do you do that? So for me, something that I learned when I was in school is that everybody wants to follow someone who's authentic and they're genuine in what they're putting out there. And so for me, when it comes to creating content, doing brand deals, it has to feel natural and real, or I'm not going to want to do it. I have this weird feeling where if I'm you know, considering about posting something and it doesn't feel right and it doesn't feel that it's actually my voice, I'm probably not going to post it. And so while a lot of people, that's a feeling they have and then they push through it. You know, I would mm -hmm. say TikTok is kind of a platform where a lot of people, they push through that barrier. For me, that's something that I've listened to and I'm thinking, okay, while that would be fun and while that is something creative and silly and it will definitely get views and get traction, that's not who I am. And that's not the brand that I'm building. And so what I've done on Instagram is everything that I'm, I have out there is very, it's curated in a way where, you know, it's not just these thrown together snippets of my life, but you can follow my Instagram and you can see 
where I've gone. You can see when I've gone there and you can follow along the relationships that I've built with brands just through my content. So you can say, oh, she learned about this brand here. And then look, six months later, now she's starting to work with them. And then she's bringing other people in to work with them. So it's all very genuine. And I want people, when they come to my page, they say, okay, I know who Bella is through her Instagram. I know who Bella is. If I look at her Twitter, her LinkedIn, her Facebook, it's all the same me. So then when you meet me in person, there's no surprises. I'm exactly what you expect because that's what I'm putting out there. I want you to feel like you're my friend. So then when we meet, we can just pick up where we left off and that's whatever we were talking about on Instagram. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's interesting that you do say that there are things you can do that will get lots of views or lots of likes, but doesn't necessarily help build your brand in the way that you want to be able to build it as well. So, um, uh, you know, maybe the, the other thing is, uh, you know, sports can be a, a tough industry to jump into as well. Um, and like for anybody, but um, especially early in career, um, you know, for you, you know, what were some of the things that, you know, I, I mean, you mentioned that it was kind of connecting with people, but, um, you know, how did, how did you feel that, uh, like, did you target specific things when you went into it? Um, how did you, how did you go about re- leaping into an industry, which for some people can be very difficult to do? So for me, I love people. And so I don't think I've ever met someone that I couldn't have a conversation with. I just need to have the conversation. I just need to schedule it with you and then we'll become friends forever. So for me, I was fortunate enough where in grad school, we did a lot of research papers. And when you're presenting at conferences, you need to know everything that you can. So you need to talk to as many people that have been in that situation and know enough information more than you. Mm -hmm. And so with a lot of my research, I had to reach out to people. So I was put in a position where I need to reach out to someone that knows more than me, that's in a position that I want to learn about. And so from that, I made those connections with people that I don't think I would have ever thought of connecting with on my own. And so I reached out to them. We became friends. From them, I learned about other people, and then we become friends. And then I would say the sports, you know, Twitter sphere is is amazing, And they are so supportive. And I think that's one of the platforms that, especially in sports, if you're active on Twitter, that's how you meet people. That's how you network. Even if it's just liking a tweet here or favoriting a tweet here and there, you make those friends that you can kind of bring outside and that you can go to all the time. So for me, it was reaching out to people on LinkedIn a lot. If you look like my LinkedIn, I talked to so many people and there was never anything that I needed other than just a conversation. And I think Mm -hmm. that's also part of it too is, don't ask people for things. Just ask to have a conversation and be friends. And then along the road, once you've established that rapport, people want to do things for you. And you might, you know, end up need something someday, but don't need something from people. Be good on your own and just want to make friends and talk to people. And it works out really well, regardless of if you're in CrossFit, football, baseball, whatever it is, people support those who feel that they support them. Yeah. And, um, I mean, going into CrossFit is there, um, you've had some really big opportunities already um, and big, um, you know, obviously connected with some big uh, names as well. Is there somebody that that jumps out as you as, wow, if people kind of knew this person, um, you'd you'd either be surprised or that you'd just be, wow, this is exactly who I would expect them to be. Is there somebody that pops out for you that way? Oh, I love that. Um, I would say my, the person that I look up to the most, especially in my job would be Dylan Malitsky. And so with him, he's the guy to know if you want to do CrossFit events, he's young, he's done everything. Truly. He is someone that I admire so much. And when you meet him, you're like, oh my gosh, you're exactly like I thought you would be. You're friendly, you're warm, you're inviting. Yeah. And you have, you know, not necessarily the power, but you have the influence that everybody says you have. And so yeah. knowing him and being friends with him and working with him is so incredible because he is that guy that I'm like, okay, you're the person that I'm so grateful to be friends with because you're exactly who I thought you were going to be. Yeah. Wow. Really interesting. Um, and, and so, you know, you're obviously um, somebody who has lots of goals, whether it's in career and other things. Um, so maybe just, um, you know, how do you go about setting goals? Like, you know, you've obviously um, had some really great experiences. Those usually don't just come completely by happenstance. So um, how do you approach goal setting for yourself? For me, it's, you know, I create a list of places that I'd like to go and events that I'd like to work based on 
either what I've heard about them or what I've seen online. And Kazi, you can find out a lot about events just from looking at their Instagram and asking people that have been there what they think. And so for me, creating a list of, hey, I would love to go here someday. And then from there, I can go, okay, who do I know that's worked the event? What organizer do I know that works the event or production company? And I can go talk to them. Hey, if I wanted to come out to your event, what does that look like? How would I get there? And who do I need to talk to? And then in, in terms of brand goals, who do I like? Why do I like them? And what would I actually want to do with them? So when it comes to shoe brands, I don't have a shoe company that I typically work with because there are so many shoes that I uh, adore. But if I were to want to work with one, you know, do I wear them all the time? Would I recommend them to my friends above all the other shoe companies? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I always try to do is, again, I want it to feel authentic. I want people to actually believe me if I'm sharing something, especially with it's my goals. And when it comes to personal goals, I think writing things down for me has been really helpful. And I travel a ton. So when I'm on a plane, I'm just writing things down. How am I feeling? Am I nervous? What am I excited about? What are my highlights, my lowlights from each event? And then from there, I kind of think, okay, what is my goal for the next event? How can I make it better? Or how can I overcome something that was challenging to me in this, you know, in this area? And I think when I think about bringing all those things together, that's where the goal comes into play. So if I want to go work events in Mexico or Spain, okay, that's great. That's wonderful. I know the people to do that and I know how to get there. Now, a personal goal to add on to that would be learn more Spanish. Go be someone that want, they want to be there. And so I try to you know, add everything together, my professional, my personal, everything together. And then I, give, I put it out there and say, hey, this is what I want to do. And people receive that and then magic happens. So, um, so you've also been in, um, you know, high profile events, lots of people there, things like that. And, um, every time you go to a bigger stage or something where there's, there's a larger kind of, uh, whether it's a group of people right there or just more exposure, um, there's gotta be times where th that's nerve wracking, regardless of how confident you are when you go into that. Um, you know, how do you, how do you get past that? Like if the first time you're at a large event and you were there and had to speak in front of everybody, um, are there certain things that, um, that you do when kind of, you know, that you're going to be nervous at, uh, an event or, or meeting somebody or whatever it happens to be? So I am the girl that is always dancing when I go to events, I'm having so much fun. And I think by having fun, I'm able to curb any sort of nerves that I get. So if I meet the other MCs, I talk to the DJ, we're kind of on the same page we can feed off of each other and we can channel our energies so that I'm excited, I'm happy, and those nerves just go out the door. Because if I feel that I am with my friends and enjoying myself and then I get to do my job while I'm doing that, I'm not nervous anymore. Yeah. If I'm in front of a thousand people, but I feel that I'm with a thousand of my friends, I'm totally fine. But if I didn't ever feel that I could you know, communicate or if I was totally alone, that's when those nerves, you're like, okay, how do I really manage those? But then by relying on the experience that you've had previously, I think you'd be able, I would hope if I'm ever in that situation, I'll be able to move past it. But truly, I have so much fun that I think those nerves just kind of, they disappear. With every dance move that's bad or good, they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure most are, most are quite good. So, um, <laughs> so if... Um... You know, it, it was, has there been a time where, I mean, it, it, sometimes it can be difficult for, for sports people, not difficult, it might be really cool at the same time, but um, you get to meet people that, um, that maybe you've seen and kind of, you know, you've, you've watched and been a fan of for a period of time and things like that. Has there been something where you've had to talk to somebody that you just think, wow, I've, uh, you know, that person is somebody that um, I've really kind of looked up to that way and you have to present yourself very professionally that way. Has there been one of those opportunities so far and, and has it been difficult or has it been uh, something that just, you know, went very easily for you? So that's really interesting. I think, you know, I do meet so many people that a lot of people would get starstruck by, yeah. but at the end of the day, if you just see people for who they are and they're very talented at fitness and they've built their brand that way, mm -hmm. you can kind of take away that starstruck feeling and just talk to them as people. And I think that's where I've been able to stay. And so I've become friends with some people, you know, when I was in Spain, the hard work pays off crew was there. And I mean, that's, Matt Fraser, that's Matt O'Keefe, that's Sammy. It's all of these amazing people that they have thousands of maybe even millions of followers on Instagram. Anybody else would be like, oh my goodness, how can I get a picture with you? Can you sign this? 
but I don't want any of that. And it goes back to not wanting anything from people except for being their friends. Yeah. And I think the first time um, I saw them, first time I saw Rich Froning, I, you know, oh, that's cool. They're there. They're amazing people. Everybody is so excited to be there, but don't be that person. Go just talk to them, see if they need anything. And if they don't, cool. If they do help them out, but just be their friend. And I think that's where, you know, a lot of people kind of misstep is they get so excited because these people, they're celebrities and it's really fun to see celebrities in real life, but being able to take a step back and say, okay, they're real people too. And it's not fun when everybody's coming up to you saying, oh, sign this. Let me take a picture asking you all these questions because then they're not treating you like a person. They're treating you like an object, like an idol. And that doesn't feel good for anybody. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's that's good general career advice as well. There are a lot of people that, um, I mean, whether it's a CEO or somebody that has lots of profile, they're still people. And and realistically, they're, you know, once you do get to know that, you can you can see that they're still people because people have their have their um, good things that they have and they have their faults as well. So yes. and, and they are, everybody <laughs> has things to work on. So um, the other thing that's really changed in the environment that you work in, um, at least uh, I think, is that there's been um, and I think CrossFit has actually had a big impact on that is the perception of um, strong women and the prominence of that, which, um, you know, I think there's there's probably a lot of people that um, um, even see the fact that you're in the role that you're in and being able to, to kind of do those things also um, allows uh, uh, um, you know that to evolve. Um, is that something that you see? I know you haven't been in it long. It's not like we're talking about a you know a fifteen year career of of you know and see a lot of change. But I I think you probably also see how the prominence of you know that strength is is um, you know perceived very positively and and everything now compared to maybe what it was not long ago. Oh, absolutely. I think for me, so I grew up a swimmer. And so I always had these really broad shoulders and lats for days. Yeah. And so as a teenager, that was really hard for me to get over that insecurity thinking, wow, other girls do not look like me unless they're a swimmer. And then when I was in college, I was very small. I probably weighed 105 pounds, really small. I got into that mindset of, oh, the smaller, the better. I'm lifting weights, but not in a healthy way. And then when it came to finding CrossFit, I loved how it made me feel. And I loved that I was encouraged to go be strong and encouraged to put myself in a situation where I was uncomfortable. And when you PR or you do something quickly, if you do, a, you know, a hero wad, or if you do any of the girl workouts quickly and people respect that they respect you for the hard work you're putting in. And it's, yes, you have these muscles and yes, it's really cool to be able to, you know, squat 280 pounds. It's awesome. It's fun but it's so much less of a focus for me now. Yeah. And it feels so good to be able to be in that position because I think being a woman and then being a woman in sport, that body insecurity, that's tough. And that's really hard to move through and to navigate through, especially when you're in front of so many people like me. Yeah. If I was an athlete, I would be dealing, you know, the internet trolls, oh, you're so muscular, things like that. And that's fine because then you can put those away. You're an athlete, you're doing what you need to do to perform. For me, I'm not performing, I'm just out there talking. And so being comfortable in my own skin is so important. And I think that's what CrossFit is allowing me to do is go lift the weights, go do what you wanna do for fitness. You're gonna be fine. And it's okay if you have muscles, it's totally cool. And we welcome that here. And there's something, you know, I hope that if you're not doing CrossFit and you're doing another sport or you whatever you do that makes you feel alive and full for fitness, I hope you feel comfortable to go be that person and to feel whatever shape it is that you need to do. Because I've been on both ends. I'm very comfortable and happy with how I look now. And I've been very miserable. And I think CrossFit has allowed me to bridge that gap and then have a voice. Hey, I know how you feel. And this is how I got through it. If I can be an assistant to you, please let me do that because I get it. And it's not fun. It's really not fun. But that's what's so beautiful about it is there is a bright side and there is an ending to it and not saying you don't, you know, sometimes feel, Oh, wow, I really don't like the way I look today. But if you think about it more of what you're, you know, finding out that you're capable of and that other people support that it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope many, many people hear that, um, you know, boys and girls to hear that message yeah. because I, I think that's uh, it's, it's important to hear that and, and to have the voice to do that. So, um, um, the um, you talked about that you're a 
write down your goals kind of person and things like that. So for the next little while, like, do you have, like, do you set a bunch of short-term goals? Do you have some big kind of goals over the next little while? Like, do you have things that, um, you know, that, that you really, you'd like to see your kind of career evolve to? Absolutely. So for me, within the past month, I've been able to book out 23 events for the next year. And so those are those big goals. You know, where do I see myself next year? Apparently it's international and mm -hmm. it's a lot. And that's so fun. It's yeah. so amazing to be able to say that. And so to be, you know, an international presence in CrossFit, that's one of those big goals that I want to be. I want to, you know, if you go to Spain, you go to Australia, you go to Dubai, you're going to a CrossFit event, you're going to see me there. And then you're comfortable because you have a friend. You know, we've been, we've been able to establish that. And then as a person, you know, I want to continue finding my voice through all of this. What is my purpose with being an MC? I've noticed I've gained such a following, but what am I going to do with that? And so that's where I'm trying to figure out now what I can do with it. Who can I help and how can I help them? The job that I have is so specific and there's only so many major events that need MCs, but how can I help you if this is your goal? And so figuring out those next steps for me and how to help other people, that's kind of where I'm at personally. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think for, you know, the next year, I would love to be able to establish some consistent brand deals that I'm thinking, you know, I'm really proud of this. And I've put in work to build that relationship with them where we feel that it's a mutual decision. And then people yeah. that see that, they see it and they think, wow, she's really come a long way with them. This is really cool. Yeah. Because how amazing is it that you can meet a brand grow with them. And then everyone appreciates that too, because, you know, it's so easy to say, oh, I support that brand and here's my discount code, but I want to believe in it. And then if you believe in me, I want to maintain that trust with you. So, yeah, no, that's uh, well, and that's, that's cool that you have kind of both of those um, perspectives as well, which, um, you know, I think a lot of people in the audience will uh, uh, enjoy hearing both of those things. And, and um, I think the one thing that, um, you know, you touched on that, that maybe, you know, what we, what we always get every guest um, is to try to have a couple of things that I know we've touched on, on some of them, but um, uh, a couple of, uh, whether it's tips or, or a couple of steps people can have. And I, I think because, um, you know, we had that talk about, um, you know, people breaking into to an industry that whether it's sports or whether it's something else that is maybe um, that first kind of foot in the door can be very difficult for some people. Um, do you have a couple of tips on, on how to, um, you know, how to, to kind of create or develop some opportunities in, in the career that you're, you're hoping to get into, especially in early stages when it can be really difficult for people? Absolutely. So I think this would go across any sort of career, whether that's sport or whatever it is you want to do. I would say reach out to people, become their friend and ask for nothing. I think that, you know, I've said it before, but that's truly how you establish connections and relationships that actually mean something. Mm -hmm. And you could, you could reach out to a CEO of a company and you just have a conversation somewhere along the way, they have a job for you. And you're not asking for anything off the bat because it doesn't feel good to ask for anything, especially if you're on the receiving end. Um, so I would definitely say that, you know, make friends and ask for nothing and it feels really good. Mm -hmm. I would also say, use your social media for good, not evil. So I think put everything out there that you want people to see about you and have a uniform identity. So you can have different things. You could be silly on Twitter and you can be silly on TikTok and whatever you wanna be, but make sure that's consistent. So if that's who you are, make sure that's who you are in person as well, because nobody really likes surprises, especially when you think you're gonna be around someone that's one way and they're completely the opposite. And I've seen it both ways where a social presence is crazy out there and then you meet them in person and you're just thinking, you're pretty normal. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> and then yeah. I've seen it too, where they're very, you know, not consistent on social media. They don't do a ton. They're kind of a ghost. And then you meet them and they have this beautiful, big personality. Mm -hmm. And then you're thinking, okay, we got to bring those two together because we're missing something here. And then I would also say, have a goal and just go for it. And it's okay if that changes. Because before, if you asked me three years ago what I was doing, I would probably be working for, you know, either an NFL athlete or the actual NFL itself, because that's where I was going and that's what I wanted to do. And then I saw this pivot and I was okay with that, even though it was different than what I wanted. Yeah. And I am so for, okay, this is my goal, go work for it and don't stop till you get there. But if something else comes up along the way, receive that opportunity and see what that looks like, because it could be way more amazing than you could have ever thought. 
Yeah. Well, and there's so much change in in everyone's path as they go along that um, you know those opportunities. If you if you miss them, you may have missed out on on uh, what will make you happy in the long run. So um, so that's uh, again excellent uh, information. And I think a lot of people will take away some some great stuff today, Bella. Really appreciate that. If people are looking, I mean, obviously, if they if they aren't already, they may want to know how can I uh, how can I follow Bella? Because it sounds like um, you know I'd love to be able to see kind of her stuff and what's happening with her over the next little while. What are the best ways to be able to do that? You can find me on every single social media platform, Miss Bella Martin. That's also mm-hmm. another thing I would say. Uniform social media handles is it's the best. Um, and then if you ever need me, that's my email as well. So I am very responsive because people are responsive to me. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I try to do for every people. So if you need me, Miss Bella Martin, I'm pretty much everywhere. <laughs> all right. And what we will do is we'll make sure all of those, I mean, it's nice and easy, but we'll make sure it's in the show notes too. So if you've missed that for some reason, feel free to do that. If you haven't hit subscribe on the podcast, do that right now because uh, we have great people every week, just like Bella. And, uh, um, you know, again, I, I think that um, we have a pretty diverse audience. And I think that um, what you've shown today is that you have this kind of diverse way of kind of looking at things. So um, thank you very much for all of the the great information that you've provided to people today and uh, um, really looking forward to seeing kind of where things go over the next little while for you. So uh, thanks for taking the time today, Bella. I appreciate it. No, thank you. This is awesome. I hope something that I said helps someone and if, if it does, just reach out. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it will. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll have lots of people reaching out too. So um, again, thanks everybody else for listening and we will talk again on Big Idea, Big Moves. Oh, my God.